There was one woman and she had a very wealthy husband who did not want to share any wealth with her. And he made this, he made her swear that when he will die, she will take all the money and place those money in the casket with him. So she swore to him, I will put all the money in the casket with you. And so he had actually a lawyer sign the papers that she will do that. So when he died, the lawyer was standing there and he asked, did you put all the money in the casket? She says, I, of course I did. I swore I'm going to put all the money in the casket. He says, well, I don't see the money in the casket. She says, well, I took all of his money, deposited it into my account and I wrote him a check. <laughs> Hustle. In the Bible, there is 2,350 verses on money. Twice as much as on faith and prayer combined. 15% of everything Jesus taught was on money. More than heaven and hell combined. One third of all the parables that Jesus talked about dealt with stewardship or finances. One in seven verses in the three gospels deal with money. The only subject Jesus spoke more about than money was the kingdom of God. From Adam to the promised land, families rule the world. From Joshua to Jesus' death, armies rule the world. Means if you had the biggest army, you rule the world. If you had the biggest family from Adam to promised land, you rule the world. From Rome to Middle Ages, religion ruled the world. If your religion was the coolest, you rule the world. From Middle Ages to Communism, politics rule the world. And from, from Communism till now, business rules the world. We live in the 21st century and the 21st century has a new golden rule. Whoever has the gold makes the rules. A statistic says that Singapore is the country that has the most millionaires according to the population. 17% of people in Singapore are millionaires. Compared to United States, it's 4.3% of people in America. America is ranked number seven with the amount of millionaires we have in our nation. If you make $50,000 a year, you are considered the top five wealthiest people wealthiest percentage that lives in the United, in, in the world fifty thousand dollars a year if you happen to make two hundred thousand dollars a year you are top four percent of the wealthiest people you and i are wealthy wealth and riches is a very relative word if you are in a room with a millionaire and you don't have a million you're poor if you're a millionaire and you're in the room with the billionaires, you're poor. If you have five billion dollars and you're in the room with Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, you're very poor. So being rich is very relative. Riches, the Bible says, have wings. means it constantly fluctuates. And Apostle Paul taught to the people and he says, tell the rich people in their generation to live in a certain way. And I believe that God has already blessed us to a certain degree. But of course, God has more for his purpose. I found this statistic that was very interesting is there are 300,000 items in an average American's home. 300,000 items in your home. Average size of an American house has nearly tripled in size over the past 50 years. One out of 10 Americans rent off-site storage. U.S. has upward of 50,000 storage units, uh, storage facilities, more than five times the number of Starbucks stores. An average family, an average woman owns 30 outfits, one for every day of the month. In 1930, the figure was nine. Our homes have more television sets than people. Not in my house. An average television is turned on in the house one third of the day. This is where the money is going. You want to cut your electricity bill? 
break the TV. Americans donate 1.9% of their income to charitable causes and shop, shopping malls outnumber the high schoolers more than and more people spend money on shoes, jewelry and watches than on higher education. I'm going to read 1st Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, David, in the midst of his brothers and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. I want to speak today about fighting financial famine and we will take the story of David and see a few truths concerning our work, our career, our dream, business and money in general. David's story begins with him being anointed by prophet Samuel but I want you to see a very interesting story, a very interesting picture. The Holy Spirit comes upon David, a rustic young boy. The Holy Spirit does not come upon David to make him into a priest, into a pope or into a Levite, a singer in the temple of God. The Holy Spirit comes upon David to anoint him for a task of running a country, for a government. This is very interesting because most of us know the Holy Spirit when He anoints is to heal the broken hearts, is to deliver the captives, set the oppressed at liberty and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. But in here we see that the Holy Spirit is not limited to ministry in the church. Holy Spirit also wants to empower people for the work they do outside of the church. Can somebody say amen? I want you to write down truth number one. Relationship with the Holy Spirit enhances your ability. Relationship with the Holy Spirit empowers your ability to do your job. We see that in the story of Joseph. When Joseph translated the dream for Pharaoh and after he translated the dream for Pharaoh, he gave Pharaoh an advice on what he should do to avoid the famine. And Pharaoh said the following, Pharaoh said, can we find such one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? It's interesting. Pharaoh, who was a heathen. Pharaoh, who never heard of the day of Pentecost because it didn't happen. Pharaoh, who never seen a Bible because it didn't exist. Looked at Joseph in the government house. After Joseph gave him an advice and Pharaoh said, there's no one better for the, for a position of a prime minister than Joseph. What is his qualification? Which university did he go to? What was Joseph's experience or what is his reference? Because his qualification was he ran a prison, he was a slave and he had a really terrible reputation. But you know why Joseph was hired? Because Pharaoh who wasn't a Christian, he said in him is the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the way he speaks, the kind of advice he offers, how he sees things, he can help us prevent a collapse in our economy so we will hire him. The Holy Spirit wants to empower you not just to speak in tongues but to make money, to run a business. For goodness sake, show up to work on time. Do your work properly advance in your career finish your school pay off your debt be good in sales offer your life in such a way that brings the most glory to God and brings also reflects the character and the goodness of God in your life amen now some of you may say well I am not David I'm not running for the president Vlad this message is for Hillary and Donald they are the Josephs of our generation I am not running for the president. Well there was a man in the Bible, Moses and when Moses was building a tabernacle God told Moses I want you to find this guy who in Exodus God said see I have called by name Bezalel the son of Uri the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah 
and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge and in all matter of workmanship to design artistic works to work in gold in silver and bronze in cutting jewels for setting in carving wood and to work in all matter of workmanship God said Moses I want you to find this guy he is amazing with wood with diamonds he is incredible with gold and this guy has an artistic eye do you know why because I filled him with the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit was not limited to people who ran countries but to people who worked with things like wood gold diamonds who worked with things like art do not tell yourself you do not need the Holy Spirit because what you're doing is not on the CNN news every job we do requires the help and the power and enablement of the Holy Spirit when you establish relationship with the Holy Spirit he begins to enhance your ability to do your work you begin to be like Daniel in your work Daniel the Bible says one was 10 times better more sharper than anyone else around him so much more he was promoted very quickly God wants you to be in your workplace not just be the one who carries a King James Bible but who succeeds where others fail who has wisdom where others are confused who picks up papers and who is an asset to the company not a liability that you're not a person that the bosses and the managers always gather and cannot find how to get rid of you but you're a person that even when a company is downsizing they said there's one person we cannot afford to lose and that is him when they work here since they came here things were changed and things are better it's not because they speak in tongues but because the Holy Spirit enhances their ability to do what they do the Holy Spirit won't help you just because you're a Christian the Holy Spirit will help you because you value the Holy Spirit all Christians have the Holy Spirit but the Holy Spirit does not have all Christians the Holy Spirit helps people who value Holy Spirit more than their job people like Judas who value 30 silvers to 30 pieces of silver more than the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit doesn't honor people like that people who are like Achan who took a Babylonian garment and he valued that more than the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit doesn't move on people like that but once you prioritize the Holy Spirit in your life you will begin to sense his grace his favor sense you performing higher than your education you performing higher than your skills and your ability you doing things that you said that's not me there was someone else who was helping you his name is the Holy Spirit whether you're in sales whether you are in business whether you're doing daycare whether you are running a small company or whether you are just managing your children right now in your house you need the Holy Spirit amen now I want you to see I want you to see a verse that the, that the friends of Job told Job they said if you make the Almighty your gold yes the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver for then you will have your delight in the Almighty it's interesting when you make prioritizing in your mind that the Holy Spirit is your gold he is your silver guess what happens you begin to have feelings for the Holy Spirit many people say I I don't have that passion for the Holy Spirit until you make him your gold your silver your feelings for him will be dead or nothing delight for the Almighty comes after you redefine what's the most precious and most expensive thing you have in your possession and that is not a car that is not your degree that is not your weight or your looks it is the person of the Holy Spirit with whom you're sealed till the day of your redemption amen the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver for then you will have your delight in the Almighty and lift your face to God and he will make your prayer to him you will make your prayer to him and he will hear you 
you will pay your vows to him so God will hear you when you delight in him you delight in God when you make him your gold you will also declare a thing declare a thing how many times we declare I am blessed I will prosper I will get that job and many people see that their declarations are just empty words like Goliath got up and said I will kill anybody who comes against me David got up and killed him declaration was empty but God says you will declare a thing and it will be established for you so light will shine on your ways why the Almighty is your gold make Holy Spirit your gold if you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit you are already the richest person on the planet earth you are the richest person when you have a real never under no circumstances no matter how busy your job gets no matter how busy your school or how busy your family gets never under any circumstances abandon your relationship with the Holy Spirit to make an extra buck ask Judas and ask him where it leads to not promotion but a funeral ask a servant of Elisha and he will tell you it does not lead to a bigger house it leads to a leprosy in the house anytime we abandon Holy Spirit to make just an extra buck or because we got a job we're telling him we were never really interested in you Holy Spirit we were interested in just few bucks and he looks at us and he says you're so miserable over a piece of paper you are abandoning someone who holds the universe in balance and who's offering himself he is offering himself to be your partner you don't even have to beg him he is offering himself and many times we turn him over to chase something that we eventually cannot catch make the Holy Spirit your gold can somebody say amen I want to share truth number two from the David story about finances and that is if you increase your skills you will speed up your process and your income will not be your salary when you increase your skill set you will speed up the process the process of going from where you are to where God wants you to be and your income means that what you get from nine to five job will not be the total of the money that is coming into your life David portrays that in a very amazing way first of all I want you to take a look at David's resume and David's resume goes like this somebody said look I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite who is skillful in playing he was skillful in playing playing music he had nothing to do with the anointing he was a musician he is mighty man of valor he was brave he was a man of war means he knew how to use weapons he was prudent in speech that means he could speak without using a lot of problems he, he didn't pee in his pants when he got up in front of people he he developed his speech and handsome that means he went out to gym <laughs> or used some lotions and the Lord is with him meaning and he's anointed I want you to see anointing and the presence of the Holy Spirit was not the only thing on David's resume most of us think that the only thing David was doing is just somewhere there with God but we see David he learned how to play instruments he learned how to use weapons he was brave he knew how to speak and David also not only he was also good looking but he also we see that he was a person that was attracting attention actually David I want you to write down a few things under this truth one is build your skill set Leonardo da Vinci was a painter and most of us remember him as a painter but actually he was also a mathematician, a sculptor, a philosopher and an inventor. Most of us remember Thomas Edison as the person who invented the light bulb even though he didn't invent the light bulb he perfected the light bulb already the light bulb existed but it wasn't shining too long it would flicker and die right away but he perfected the light bulb but Thomas Edison has 1093 patents in America under his name 
a thousand ninety three discoveries that he has made under his name and most of us think he only had a light bulb this guy was a genius and he didn't just do one thing he did many things the thing that our culture says you have you know jack of all trades and master of none that's a lie you're never really a master of anything anybody who is a master of something will tell you they're still evolving but the lie of the enemy that many times limits people's income in their life is this is when you only have one thing that you know how to do you open a store and or you open a bakery and you cook you make cookies and people love your cookies and they buy your cookies if the only thing you do is you improve your ability to make cookies but you do not learn how to sell those cookies you don't learn how to hire people to make those cookies you don't learn how to turn your bakery into a franchise and sell it you will for the rest of your life only make cookies and make as much money as you're making right now in order to go further you have to advance in your skill set David was called to be a king but the first job he had in the palace was a musician he did not get to the palace as a king he went to the palace as a musician and because he was a musician he got promoted to a general and after that he got fired spent a few years building his own army after he built his own army he took over one tribe and then took over the rest of the tribes and that's exactly how typically it happens your dream is dependent on you developing other skills that will unlock God's blessing in your life amen the second uh, part about this truth is that we have to create other flows of income create other flows of income for David when he was a shepherd he was also into delivery he was delivering cheese and food to his brothers and to the general and after that David got hired to be a musician the Bible says when King Saul didn't have his uh, little crazy episodes David wouldn't have the job no more he would go back to be a shepherd and on the weekends he would go to work as a musician and then once in a while he would deliver cheese you see David already had three jobs at once and most people have one part-time job and they're looking for depression pills because their life is hard God wants you not just to have your nine to five job as the only source of income many people here today now I understand you may not be able to play music but you can create a blog but you can get a rental property but you can begin to create a teach somebody how to sing you can use your skills to fix computers nowadays Apple has released their own software on how you can make an app out of the back backyard of your house make an app and for the rest of your life if you hit a jackpot and your chances are really high because the lazier you are the more likely your creativity will work in the other way when it comes to games that's why Bill uh, that's why Bill Gates always hired lazy people in particular departments because they will always find a way how to do it faster without getting up and without putting much effort into it and you get an app going and guess what happens and you can make so much money that you your family all of your family and four generations after you won't even have to work for the rest of their life there's many ways to do that but if you sit on blessed assurance Jesus is mine and I'm not gonna do anything but just work and beg God that my boss will give me a raise of 10 cents that's not how God wants you to live create other sources of income I've experienced this on my on my own self when I was 20 years of age and I remember when I got the first rental property and it started to bring me finances and then you know when I saw that it's possible to do that then other sources of income came in and then when we got married we we got another rental property and we moved in we saw there was a basement that was vacant at first we were hesitant and then we rented each square of that basement to that point that we milked that duplex to so much that we lived there for free and the cash flowed over three hundred dollars back to us and we were able to save the money eventually to do something else with it and people look at us and they say you were smart I wasn't smart it's just common sense opportunities are in this country and God wants you not just to have income coming from your job he wants you to create other things that when you lose your job you don't lose your life but you will have time to be able to find something but your life doesn't depend on that can somebody say amen career is like clothes 
it temporarily dresses you but it should never define you one thing that I wanted to add about the extra income or I wanted to add about developing extra skill sets is in earlier days when I had a rental property it didn't dawn on me that I actually could tithe out of my rental property I just would tithe out of you know the, the money I would get from my job but out of extra income I wouldn't tithe from it until one day it just hit me that wait I have a rental property and maybe I could just take out of the profits and tithe to it I was like well that's not you know God's but I'm like wait I want God to bless that as well and so I started to tithe out of that and that opened doors to the fact that eventually we got the second rental property we started to tithe out of that to the point where now I don't have none of the rental properties but God has opened the way of income when I travel and I speak and sometimes God you know through that there comes a, enough provision for me that compensates for both of those, du of those duplexes that were and I've noticed one thing is that when I would travel before and they would bless me you know with money to cover my gas and earlier days it was very little and I would come home you know I would never take 10% out of that and bring to God I'm like well that that you know I already gave my life to Jesus there and they covered my gas you know the rest of it is for me and then when I started to tithe out of that you know out of extra I noticed how the extra became extra extra so I started to tithe more instead of 10% I started to give 20% out of what would come out of extra and this month you know I bumped it to 30% because I've noticed that God I want to keep up with God if I see he's generous with me I want to keep up with him because I've recognized you can never outgive God you can never outgive God God is not a stingy he's not broke he doesn't have a credit card he needs to pay off when you're giving he does not you're not solving any problem what all you're doing is you're expending how much he wants he, he you allowing him to bless you back and so I really want to encourage those of you who have a business those of you who are doing things on the side or those of you who get money from commissions or those of you who get money from sales but you have a stable income and who somehow have this idea that anything above my income I'm not gonna get God involved in that you're making a mistake some of the extra that you have today in five years will be a franchise that could put you financially in a completely different world get God involved remember you're not dealing with a politician you're not dealing with IRS you're not dealing with religion you're dealing with the generous almighty God who has streets made out of gold has no interest in you you're not robbing anyone but yourself of opportunity for God to bless you can somebody say amen the third truth is whoever sacrifices integrity to get ahead is only moving faster in the wrong direction whoever sacrifices integrity to get more money is moving is only moving faster in the wrong direction I like what this guy who started the company from zero and grew it to 12 billion dollars this is what he said there are no moral shortcuts in the game of business or life there are basically three kinds of people the unsuccessful temporarily successful and those who become and remain successful the only difference is character Dwight Eisenhower our president who used to be our president he said the supreme quality of leadership is unquestionably integrity without it without no real success is possible no matter whether it is on a section gang football field army or an office when Warren Buffett was asked what kind of qualities he looks for people that he hires he mentioned three he said one is integrity two is intelligence and three is energy and he said this hire someone without the first and the other two will kill you this is a man who is the second richest man in the world and has been for a very long time he says hire someone without integrity and all the energy and the intelligence they have will kill you or your company and David teaches us very very powerfully if you have integrity you will be prosperous at first prosperity will seem like be delayed but if you don't have integrity sooner or later you will fail not because we live on the earth where God says the foolish man will be cut off from the earth but we also live in America where we have IRS and they will find you <laughs> what integrity does without integrity your blessing cannot pass the test of time Daniel lived through four kings and two different kingdoms and always was on the top things shifted but Daniel was always the same 
because Daniel had integrity. He had so much integrity they couldn't find any problems in him that they had to make a law for him to stop praying because there was no problems in his tax returns, there was no problems in his business dealings. He was like a sound without any problems in his financial dealings. They had to find a problem in his prayer life. God wants you to be a person who has integrity in everything that you do. Without it your blessing will not pass the test of time. If you lie to get to the top, you have to keep lying to stay at the top. If you sleep your way to the top, you're going to have to keep sleeping to stay on the top. And David recognized there was an opportunity for David to kill Saul. If he would kill Saul, he would become a king next day. And one of the servants looked at David and says, remember, you got a prophecy. You got a prophetic word that one day God will put your enemy in front of you and you will do whatever you desire. And David knew. That prophetic word was a test. God did not want him to do what he desired. God wanted him to do something that he will not regret for the rest of his life being on the throne. And God did not want him to be a king because he murdered somebody. God wanted him to be a king because God brought him to that level. Being, having integrity sometimes would means it looks like you're, you're taking slower. But you are taking slower where you are not going back down again. Whereas if you're going without integrity, you will hit the bottom numerous times. Amen. Integrity what it does also is a, integrity lack of it is a slow fade. It starts with insignificant acts and leads to the unthinkable acts. You know for David integrity started with small things. When Saul was there urinating and, or taking, uh, taking his bathroom stuff and David came and cut a little bit of his robe and the Bible says and David's heart condemned him. He didn't kill Saul. He didn't even stab him. He didn't pinch him. He cut a little bit of his rope to prove a point that he didn't want to kill him and just cutting his rope he felt like I ruined his rope and his heart was convicting him. David protected in the smallest things his integrity and therefore God elevated him and protected him. But there came a point when David became lazy. When David became too relaxed and instead of going to war David stayed home. David decided that I'm too old. I fought too many times. I deserve to stay home. I deserve to have a vacation. David instead of Doing something at home, he slept all day. In the evening, got up and he saw a woman taking a shower. In those days, they couldn't afford the curtains. And so David, not to the fault of his own, saw the woman taking a shower naked. And this is where we see small, in one day, acts of compromise. Small, insignificant. Not going to war, sleeping all day, beholding a woman who is naked, then commits an adultery with the woman. And then the husband of the woman comes back from war. And David asks him, go back to your wife, get her pregnant because David knew she's pregnant. And the man, the Bible says, he decides not to go back to his wife but stay with the army. He says, how could I go to my wife if my king and the kingdom is in war? And David makes him drunk so that he could go to his wife. And the man being drunk had more integrity than David when he was sober. You saw David go corrupt, go so disgusting inside. In a matter of few months, the man after God's heart becomes twisted, a psychopath. To the point where he decides to kill the guy, writes the letter and puts the letter of suicide in the very guy's hands to carry to the general. I mean, how sick can you be? That's what happens to each one of us when we begin to slip and trip in small areas. You find yourself in the areas you never thought are possible. You find yourself doing things you never thought you could even be doing that. Why? It happened to David. It could happen to you. It could happen to me. That's why you want to protect your consciousness with the issue of money, with the issue of work when it comes to small things. Like you steal somebody's money, like coming late to work, like cheating on taxes. All of these things, they're small. But listen, they create within you a capacity to go stupid. And to go haywire and David murders the man and the interesting part is David got away with it but the Bible says but it displeased the Lord the prophet came and more damage came to David's house over lack of integrity than any pain Saul has ever caused you can get away with it but remember there is a God in heaven and there is IRS. <laughs> Amen. 
truth number four financial famines are either due to climate or curses financial famines are either due to climate or curses toward the later years of David's life David faced a famine the first year of the famine he thought it was probably the weather the second year of the famine he thought it's definitely gonna change on the third year of the famine David inquired of the Lord and the Lord said the reason this famine happened was because a guy before you named Saul he killed Gibeonites and because he murdered them the famine has come it's interesting that the famine didn't come upon the King Saul it came upon King David it creates a theological problem a lot of theologians they literally fry their brains on this verse because how come did this famine not come on Saul who committed the very act and then the descendants of Saul had to be hanged and then the Lord heard the prayer of Israel and sent the rain a lot of times financial troubles that we face are the result of financial curses going on in generations before us things that were done that allowed Satan to come and attack and you recognize you look back and you see people always had debt people always had problems with their jobs people always had certain accidents certain medical bills that always caused them to live in a financial trouble two-thirds of Americans say they would not have enough money for a thousand dollar emergency two-thirds of Americans 65 percent of Americans would say they would not have enough money for a 500 dollar emergency in the year 2000, from, from 2003, for the past 12 years, the average income has grown to 26%. The average cost of living has gone up to 29%. The average cost of medicine has gone up to 51%. And the average cost of food has gone up to 37%. The price of living has overlapped the price of income a long time ago. In the average household last year in 2015 where there's a man and a woman on the average a credit card a people own $15,000 in credit card $27,000 in outer loans and $48,000 in student loans and mortgage $171,000 people in our nation though we have great opportunities are drowning in financial problems I had a message today written by one young man who just came from the mission field and he says Vlad I came back and I'm losing my faith in God I no longer know if I believe in God or not and I said why would you want to lose your faith in God he said how come people in other countries are not so lucky why are children dying because they have nothing to eat and we are so lucky in America I said I don't know which part of America you're living in but I'm like even in this country people are suffering financially people are hurting though they look happy on Sunday but many times the financial challenges are nothing to write home about are very challenging and many of those challenges happen because of spiritual forces they need to be dealt with and they need to be brought down and once they are brought down we see an open heaven we see a grace and the power of God moving in their life to see them set free for the glory of God amen in this service today we are going to pray for those financial challenges we're going to pray that God will begin to open doors where they've been closed we're going to pray that God's going to begin to open heavens where they have been closed and we're going to begin to come against the curses that maybe are holding back the rain in your life or in the life of your family for those of you who maybe have certain things challenges that God will supernaturally will begin to open the door in your area and that the Holy Spirit will empower you to make a difference in your work in your career and in your school can somebody say amen?